Meet Lysovisia. I know I've said this about a lot of the animals I've done episodes on, but Lysovisia is truly one of the most recently discovered so far, with the exception of Parasitus. While it was only publicly announced in 2019, the actual fossil material was uncovered between 2006 and 2014, nearly a decade. It started in the Lipislatska clay pit in Lysovis, a village in Poland. Hopefully I'm not butchering that pronunciation. Paleontologists Jerzy Zik, Thomas Sul, and Gregor Nidzwitski were the ones who found the fossils, but they first thought they belonged to a sauropodomorph. These were long-necked animals that had the appearance of sauropods, but were often bipedal. The team saw just how large and heavy the bones were, and went to the only kind of creature they could be. It wasn't until two years later, in 2008, that the fossils were recognized as a dicnodont. These were a group of animals that were almost like a mix between mammals and reptiles. They were plant eaters with a pair of small tusks, and could range from the size of a small dog to the size of a wild boar. These new bones, though, were much bigger. And over 1,000 bones of this animal were dug up from the clay pit between 2007 and 2014. Despite so many fossils, it's estimated that they only belong to around two very big-boned individuals. The Savicia wouldn't be given its name until even later, in January of 2019. Not exactly the most original or awesome sounding name, it was humbly based on the village it was found in. As of now, the fossils are located in the collection archives of the Institute of Paleontology at the Polish Academy of Sciences and the Department of Paleobiology and Evolution at the University of Warsaw, Poland. Lysovisia is ranked as the largest dignodont discovered thus far, and with several bones from various individuals, we can make some pretty good estimates. Measuring at around 15 feet or 4.5 meters long, and 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters tall, it would have had the stature of an Asian elephant. The weight of this giant would have also been similar, averaging roughly 7 tons. It was the biggest herbivore in its environment, and no sauropodomorphs existed there either, meaning Lysovisia filled the role of largest browsing plant eater during its time. It was built like a tank, with pillar-like legs supporting a barrel-shaped body. Its head is also incredibly unique compared to animals alive today. A giant crest stuck out from behind, allowing for muscle attachments to go from these crests and flow into the neck. Its mouth curved into an almost turtle-like beak without any teeth. Accompanied by two large projections from its jaws, it was still very much capable of biting. These weren't tusks though, but a different kind of structure entirely. Tusks are separate bones that stick out from the front of the mouth. These triangle shaped structures were instead attached directly to the beak and jaw. This mouth may seem odd for a herbivore, since beaked animals like birds and turtles typically eat nuts, fruit, or meat. But as mentioned before, this visa was built different, and its diet was no exception. While it likely ate soft vegetation like leaves and conifers, we also have direct evidence for another kind of food source. In fossilized feces from Lysovisia, we can see large portions of woody material. In other words, this animal was such a powerhouse that it could eat entire conifer trees if it wanted to. Leaves, pine cones, bark, and all. Moving to the legs, they were very odd compared to similar creatures. Dicnodonts like Placerius and Lystosaurus had large sprawling gaits with elbows coming outwards, similar to the front limbs of some lizards. With Lysovisia, its legs jutted out directly underneath its body, just like those of an elephant or a rhinoceros. This was likely an adaptation to improve energy efficiency and perhaps even speed, especially for younger individuals that needed to escape predators. More on that later. Having legs that stayed relatively straight when standing still helps to make carrying a large body a bit easier, since no exceptional strain will be put on them. Trying to reach such a massive size takes a lot of energy, and for Lysovisia, it took a lot of energy over a very short period of time. Studies on juveniles and the inside of bones show that instead of slowing down as they grew, 
Nusavisia had a rapid growth rate and raced to adulthood with very little slowing down. There's even been suggested evidence that Lysavisia moved in herds. The fossilized feces I mentioned earlier weren't just few and far between. They were abundant and in singular locations. This likely meant that there were many individuals in that area at the same time. And while emptying bowels doesn't exactly seem like your average communal activity, it's not too uncommon in certain mammals, like elephants, deer, horses, and even raccoons. Living in herds would have been very helpful, considering the ecology around them. Their environment was pretty similar to the Florida Everglades, with wet and swampy areas paired with slow-moving water sources. But instead of alligators, Lysavisia had to worry about an even larger predator, smock. Named after the Polish word for dragon, it was just as long and tall as Lysavisia, but it was much more agile. We even have bite marks showing that Smok was a common hunter of Lysavisia, though they were mainly found on juveniles. It seems that even a Polish dragon doesn't want to mess with a plant-eating bulldozer, much less a whole herd of them. Other animals that existed in the area include some smaller dinosaur-like creatures called Scylosaurids, a variety of small pterosaurs yet to be named, the small possum-like mammal Helutherium, the aquatic and carnivorous Cyclotosaurus, and Gerothorax, a large, flat-bodied amphibian. Due to its very existence going public only recently, Lysavisia has sadly not gotten much love in media. No films or shows have featured it, and the only presence it's even had is a toy made by Collect A. It's surprisingly accurate and high quality despite their other models. And that wraps up June's Prehistoric Animal. I'm going to be completely honest, this episode was slated to come out in early May, but I had some other things that I needed to take care of, so it kind of got pushed back. We are in full swing for the summer though, and with this episode dropping early this month, I'll hopefully be able to upload in the first week of every month from now on. No promises though. And since it's the summer, I should have a bit more time on videos other than these, so let me know if there's anything you want to see or want me to create. As always, if you want your animal suggestion in an episode, leave a like, subscribe, and comment with a prehistoric creature of your choice. Head over to twitch.tv slash paleoentertainment to hang with the community live, and join the discord link below to hang with nerds like you. Love y'all, and as always, keep your pencils sharp.